Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we will be discussing spoilers as usual, so here's your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I'll start by asking, what is new to you, Alex? Ugh, ugh, um... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just just stress on all fronts is really fun. Um, mm. You know, job, mm-hmm. living, that sort of thing. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying. I really, I feel like I haven't done anything. I've been, I've been doing some writing, not like a ton, but a good amount. And that's good. I've been. Um. Getting a bunch of stuff published, which has been nice. So I've had a couple things. Yeah. See, that's exciting. You should be excited. I know that some things are crappy, but, like, that's really great. Uh, sorry, my mom just came in and gave me a light bulb for my light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, as you do, just get a light bulb from your mom. I mean, she works at a lighting store, so I mean, she's the perfect person to get a light bulb from, but I just wasn't expecting it. Anyway. uh, I wasn't either. (laughs) This is just the the interruptions episode. I guess. Wow. (laughs) What was I saying and what were you saying? I was just saying you should you should be encouraged. Oh yeah. Other things are crappy, but like that's super cool that you're getting more and more things published. Yeah, it's I especially because, you know, when the book was uh, coming out and getting ready, I wasn't submitting anywhere. And I was like, you know what? New year, just send a bunch of stuff out. And like a good number have been uh, accepted. So I'm just, I'm just very happy about that. Fabulous. So That's pe- awesome. People can look forward to that. I've had a couple come out this week and I have got two or three more lined up. So, Well, that's just great. Actually, I want to promote one of them because... It, I really enjoy the poem. Um, yeah, go for it. Uh, so I don't know how to pronounce the name of the the uh, <laughs> journal that published it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's Kahoodaloodling, Kahoodaloodling, something like that. Yeah, uh, it's Kahoodaloodling, all one word. Anyway, um, they did a. Um, <laughs> A queer issue, um, and they picked my poem, um, Instructions for Those Who Have Forgotten How to Cry. Oh, I loved that one. Or lear- Learned Not to Cry, sorry. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it's in their, their 2018, winter 2018 queer spaces issue, so uh, you can look for that on Twitter and stuff, or on their website. Great. It's great. Everyone should read it. It's 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 intense, but it's a good intense. It's not like yeah, I mean it's scary it's, or sad. Yeah, it's you know maybe a little melancholy, but mm-hmm. but like I don't know, bittersweet maybe something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, have you been up to anything? You see anything? You watch anything good? You eat anything good? <laughs> it's gotta be something. I'm eating. I'm eating such sad things. I've been having such horrible <laughs> heartburn and and and. <laughs> all that so like i oh one that's one thing that's good it has been giving me horrible heartburn but um uh pop tarts came out with two exclusive new flavors (laughs) one one is chocolate and and like cream so it's literally the cookies and cream one but like a little bit different Mm -hmm. um and it's basically the same. It's not as good as the cookies and cream one, but that one's fine. But then they have a strawberry milkshake one. It is the best Pop-Tart that has ever existed. That sounds really good. I had like four of them when I was drunk. It was, <laughs> they were so good. So yeah, the, the night, I think it was the Grammys. I, uh-huh. I got home from work and I was like, I'm just going to get drunk and eat Pop-Tarts. And I did. It was wonderful. Well, that's great. Especially because the, you... the Grammys were a little disappointing. Yeah, they're... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what happens at the Oscars. Right. Right. Um, hopefully, I won't have to get drunk for that, but sometimes it's fun. Yeah, makes it go much. by. Makes it go by faster. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, the Oscars are long. Yes, they are. And they usually it's start like a really whole late, day. too. Yeah, well, and I guess it just depends on if you feel like tuning in for all the pre-show stuff, or if yeah. you just kind of want to get to the heart of the matter. <laughs> I used to watch all the, the like red carpet and stuff, and I'm like, I can just go online and look at all the dresses. Yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have <laughs> to listen to these insipid reporters Ugh, just right. Fill time. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, and like all the good conversations are usually on YouTube. Like I think Vanity Fair does a really good series with all the nominated people. Um, a bunch of different places on that post on YouTube do some really good conversations. Yeah, Movie Bob uh, just put up his uh oscar predictions he's like yeah it's a little early but there's actual movies coming out in february so i figured i'd just do this now (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and uh his money for uh for best picture is on the shape of water which he makes a pretty good case for i hadn't really thought so but i think um, i think the the, the reason people are really putting their money behind the shape of water is because it's um it doesn't have it doesn't really have any visible flaws and it's just a very well put together and well-rounded film yeah well and and his his point was he feels like um paul thomas anderson's just a little too weird for <laughs> uh the oscars so probably phantom thread is out um he didn't think that three billboards outside of ebbing missouri was quite up to snuff um, that leaves The Shape of Water, Get Out, and Lady Bird. He feels like Lady Bird just isn't quite the, the magnitude of film that, that uh-huh. they want to do for Best Picture. It's sort of a small, intimate little story, not quite the Best Picture type extravaganza. And then um, Get Out is maybe a bit too edgy <laughs> <laughs> for the for the Academy. Just... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, they, they maybe the uh, the members of the Academy see a little too much of themselves in the villains of Get Out. <laughs> and so they'll go with the movie that's a little bit more palatable as far as um, the villains go mm-hmm. uh, in their case. And, you know, it's still a movie <laughs> about, you know, underdogs and the downtrodden yeah. banding mm-hmm. together against the establishment but this establishment doesn't quite look like the establishment of hollywood so Mm -hmm. fair case i think uh what about you anything interesting well yeah a couple things so the the audiobook that i made is so close to publication it's so close i had to do some last minute fixes because some of the um the the files weren't quite uh, up oh, to standards mm-hmm. for Audible, and so I had to process them, do some fixing of technical audio things that mm-hmm. I am learning <laughs> to do. <laughs> Turns out audio production is hard. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I think we're all good. I, I resubmitted it all last night, and it should be ready for publication. So look out on audible.com for... Kaylin's Tale, uh, A Tale of Nostalgia, Valerian Volume 2. It's, I know, a mouthful. Uh, Kaylin's Tale is, I think, a sufficient title for it. It is the second book in this series, but it is also a standalone book. Mm-hmm, the um, mm-hmm. protagonist is a side character from the first book. So, I love stories uh, it's like sort that, of, where they take somebody slightly familiar or the world. Yeah, or it's sort of like her... Yeah, it's like her concurrent story with mm-hmm. the um with the first book my is my understanding. Uh I haven't read the first book. <laughs> but um uh, but it's it's a fun fantasy adventure with a female protagonist and uh it's it's a good time and I I'm really proud of my work on it. I I really put a lot of heart I put a lot of myself into it and so I uh, I hope that shows. But uh, other news, other <laughs> news, big uh-huh. news is, okay, so <laughs> I've been kind of playing this close to the chest because I don't want my employers to know. <laughs> but then again, I don't, they can't know about my audiobook either. That's sort of um, 
verboten as well, doing side work. But I have been pursuing a, a teaching position in Japan, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Will and I have interviews in Seattle um, next Sunday, Sunday next weekend, uh, for such a position. So I'm pretty stoked. Um, I'm. I get, it's still sort of question mark as to if we get this when mm-hmm. we would go, but like, like we're getting interviewed. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah. And like, I feel really good about this because I feel like if on paper I look good enough to be considered, then I in an interview yeah, really I can you know I can take it the rest of the way. Yeah. Like that's where I'm much more confident. Is sort of my my personability, yeah, yeah. you know. And so like, if they think on paper I look qualified then (laughs) then i feel pretty confident in my ability to like get get it you know take it over the line (laughs) in person (laughs) but yeah so like send me good vibes on sunday next week because like i'm really stoked this is super cool though it's kind of funny um so i've been looking into the company um and sort of how the setup works mm-hmm. when you go and like cuz they take care they like help you get your housing they're they're like yeah you'll have to pay rent but we subsidize it um we'll set you up in your own apartment and everything will be fine we get you your visa it's all very very easy but the thing is they're pretty strict about like no we give you a single occupancy apartment oh. and this is like japan yeah, single yeah, yeah, occupancy yeah. so it's like it's teensy yeah, weensy it's, it's and they're like a yeah box. <laughs> and and they're like yeah if you and your partner both want to go like you have to apply separately but if you both get accepted we'll try to place you as close together as possible <laughs> but no you can't cohabitate so like maybe will and i are gonna spend our first year of marriage living separately <laughs> <laughs> Which would be weird. Um, I mean, obviously, like, we'd just hang out at each other's yeah. places and sort of do it that way and just each technically have our own apartment and deal with it that way. But, like, it's kind of hilarious that we're going to have to have separate apartments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I'm getting really excited. I was kind of, like, n- not sure about it. Like, Will talked me into it and I was like okay like yeah I guess that would be pretty cool but I don't know like I'm such a homebody and I get all nervous about international travel and stuff and the idea of like a living abroad for a year kind of freaked me out but like the more and more I think about it like the more I really want to go so well it's like it's also like I mean obviously there are reasons why not but also like why not you know like well, yeah, and it's, like, if I'm gonna do it, now is the time, yeah. because it's, like, now is the time for me to, like, start being a regular grown-up, and I know that Will and I are gonna want to have kids, you know, in the next few years, and so it's, like, we gotta do this now if we're ever gonna do yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, things are, like, I'm, you know, things are fairly stable, but, like, I'm living at my dad's house, so, like... Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. this is a way to, the, you to don't, get you don't have to You don't have to tell me. <laughs> I mean, this is a podcast produced... <laughs> By our parents. <laughs> yes, sponsored by. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm like, we had to, we went shopping at, um, <laughs> we went shopping at Goodwill last night to like buy suits because in Japan they're like you have to wear like boring grown up regular suits <laughs> to work. And so they expect us to look this way for the interview. Mm-hmm. And so we had to go and just get like, suits like business professional but on the upside i found the greatest blazer that that was ever (laughs) made i put it on it was like harry potter receiving his (laughs) wand i was like this is it (laughs) this was meant for me it might be a little too out there for the interview i bought a different like a blouse and just a very plain sort of khaki Mm -hmm. colored blazer that i may choose to go with for the interview but i had to buy (laughs) this it's like big and box it's like a late 80s big box but it's still like very double breasted yeah i know that's the crazy thing it's like that big sort of oversized shoulder pads teal double breast but like in the in a good way like Mm -hmm. in the right way (laughs) 
So I'm really into this blazer. <laughs> That's pretty much my life right now. It's this blazer. Poetry and blazers. <laughs> that should be our podcast title. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, well, I guess I'll introduce our, our topic. Yeah, I was going to so say. So let, let, let me do a little bit of a, a, a sort of story about why I chose it. So basically, I sort of sprung it upon you like a week ago. Um, so n- next week, I am going to be Skyping into a college classroom. Um, I believe it's Yay. a... Um, it's a queer young adult um, fiction course. So kind of like the one we took. <laughs> yeah. But ours wasn't specifically LGBT. But, but gayer. But, yeah, but gayer. <laughs> um, and so. That's how we like yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we made it plenty gay when we took it. Um, oh, sure. But anyway, um, sure, I'm sure, Skyping sure. into this classroom. So one of my coworkers, uh, her daughter teaches teaches the course and uh, my coworker sent oh, wow. my book to her um cuz she's like she knew she was sort of teaching that sort of realm and even though my book is she'd be yeah, into even it. though my book is poetry and even though I'm not a young adult um i i sort of see a lot of the poems as you know first love sort of first breakup sort of that whole first thing and then that sort of got me thinking about what i can discuss with this class and that is sort of the mm sort of later onset uh adolescence that queer people often go through yeah yeah i like that idea of sort of like having to learn how to be a person yeah. again, well, yeah, again you know that and, and we can you know go into it and uh but basically that's sort of how i want to approach i'm sort of like a warm-up for that is to sort of talk about it here yeah yeah i'd love that that's awesome Get, and generate some ideas. And... Yeah, and it's something we can talk about with experience. It's something we can talk about. You know, we don't have to necessarily have books or movies, or we we do. But yeah. I mean, <laughs> but and that's it's... really how we frame our lives is yes, exactly. around the media that we consume. But <laughs> but but it's something like I feel like it's it's a really interesting and deep conversation to have. Yeah, so let's get to it, man. And and I have a feeling that a lot of um the impetus is uh your new favorite, call me by your name. <laughs> I mean, obviously that <laughs> I mean it's 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 all it's 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 already like it's weird because it, half of it is a regular coming of age story and not like you know, it's it he's seventeen years old and he's going through it, the main character. But then we have his lover who is i think 22 is what i heard but that seems really young for both the actor they chose Wait, and i mean yeah like army hammer school. army hammer is not <laughs> he's like 30 he's like thir- he's like 31 or 32 um, <laughs> but, but that wouldn't be the first time an actor in a film was playing a character far younger right. than their real life age um and also like he's supposed to be in grad school and he's if he's 22 that seems like he would have gone directly from undergrad which you know does happen but some people do that but <laughs> anyway so but so that there's sort of that with like although there it's heavily implied that um his character has done this before mm. um but but then we have a little bit i don't want to spoil it i can't spoil it so <laughs> basically what everybody's favorite part of the movie is is the um the main character's father has a speech at the end mm-hmm. and it almost it a little bit Im- implies that the d- the dad knows what's going on uh or or like actually understands like he has sort of been through a similar situation mm-hmm. he gets it at very least well yeah but it also almost it almost and it's up to the audience to really decide for themselves um mm-hmm. if he the dad is also queer and sort of understands on a deeper level and so that sort of brings up the whole like you know deferred adolescence thing Mm -hmm. yeah oh man that's that's so that's crazy like i hadn't i wasn't entirely sure um where you wanted to go with this when you first pitched it but like that is so present in the main sort of piece of media that i really wanted to bring into this conversation 
Um, mm-hmm. So I guess I'll go ahead. Yeah, I go ahead. recently became familiar with the musical Falsettos. Uh-huh. Um, so I I really didn't know anything about this, but I heard a, a couple of the songs came up on my Spotify, and I was like, dang, I gotta listen to this. Uh, the songs were from the 2016 revival on Broadway. Um, but the show itself is actually sort of its first... It's a weird one. So its first incarnation... Um, was published in 1979 Mm -hmm. and uh it's actually so it there's this three-part falsettos series of one-act musicals the first one in 1979 was called in trousers um the second one i believe came out in 1981 and it was called uh march of the falsettos and Mm -hmm. then the third part came out in 1990 and it's called falsetto land and then um a couple of years later they took um march of the falsettos and falsetto land and stitched them together into a full-length musical and they dropped the first act um in trousers but it is uh and so i and i believe that that falsettos the full musical came out in 92 and it is about this um jewish a uh, man living in 1979 who has left his wife and child to be with his gay lover mm-hmm. and uh, but it's 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 very much a comedy until it's not you know it's one of those it's so one of, basically all queer media <laughs> yeah it's a comedy until it's not uh <laughs> but it's so it's really funny and cute and clever and okay so i will tell you this it's one of those ones about AIDS, but it's not yeah. really mm-hmm. about AIDS, and it predates Rent. Okay, it predates Rent, and it's very—it's not really. I mean, you know, this was written during the AIDS crisis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, when you're writing a queer musical during the AIDS crisis, you kind of have to talk about AIDS. Yeah. Uh, like, there wasn't really any way around it. it you know, it maybe would have been disingenuous to not touch on the subject. Yeah. Um, but there's this great, I was just, it, it popped into my head that it's so related because, you know, this is an adult man with like, a, in, at the beginning of the play, uh, an 11 year old son, or I guess like a 10 year old son, uh, mm-hmm. and a wife who, um, you know, he kind of starts his adulthood over yeah. and he's got this great song at the beginning of act two saying it's time to grow up. Mm-hmm. And, like he's talking it's like a talk to himself about like all right like i'm i'm i've been selfish and i've been stupid and i've been crazy and now i need to like be an adult and learn how to live my l- new life as an adult mm-hmm. and yeah i was just like oh crap <laughs> it's time <laughs> to grow up now don't you think and mm-hmm. it, yeah it's it's wonderful so uh the the lover um whose name is wizard by the way what the <laughs> hell kind of a name is wizard i don't know um but he's played by um andrew rannells in the in the Ooh. revival andrew rannells of uh various fame but most significantly i think uh book of mormon and uh, he's uh, for, for those non-musical people, it would be um, <laughs> girls or um, yeah, uh, some other stuff. He's done TV, various <laughs> yeah. TV. Mm-hmm. He was on that show that was on TV for like two seconds about like dads with babies. I don't oh, know. Uh, the new normal. <clears throat> was that what it was? Yeah, it had one season. It was. Uh, I'm totally blanking I'm... on his name, but he's like in charge of TV right now. Uh, American Horror <laughs> Story all that oh yeah I, i'm blanking too yeah uh, it one of his shows but yeah andrew rannells plays wizard and he's delightful he's just <laughs> he's just wonderful but it's it's such a it's such an interesting story because yeah it's these it's it's about uh, all the characters are jewish and uh they yeah they live in uh i it's implied that they live in new york and they, uh, yeah, like, at the beginning of the show, like, he's just left his wife, um, Mar- Marvin, the, uh, Mar- yeah, Marvin. He's just left his wife, he's divorced his wife, um, and has been living with Wizard, and, uh, so it's just sort of, like, in media res. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. his ex-wife is having this breakdown, because she doesn't know what to do with her life, because her husband is now gay, you know, according to her, you know, he's, he's gay, and he's living with his boyfriend now, and, uh, the... 
you know, the son is really angry, but in kind of a funny way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's cute. This kid that plays the son, Jason, is is wonderful. Uh, but it, it's, yeah, it's this really, I mean, this is like an extremely deferred adolescence, but like he just, you know, he's living with his boyfriend and being a fun gay guy and he doesn't, you know, he's sort of decided he's going to have this new life. Of course, he still kind of is being greedy and he's like, but I want to have my wife and my son as well. Mm -hmm. Can I just have all, all of them? And they're like, no, (laughs) you cannot. (laughs) We're not just going to, of course, by the end, they actually are all a big family and it's really wonderful. Well, because, and and that's, I think that's more of the time period speaking than anything, because Mm -hmm. that doesn't seem that weird. Like, obviously he can't be married and having like, you know, a lover and yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like it's I feel like it's totally normal these days to have like especially sort of in, blended families. Yeah, especially if if one of the members comes out like obviously you still love the other person. It's just a little complicated and you can't be have the same. I mean, if anything, it'll be a stronger relationship if there's sort of that um, that barrier gone, you know. Yeah, and and it, it's what yeah, I mean it's one of those where it, it all turns into this big happy family. And to their credit, um there there's these characters that are you know good friends of um Marvin and Wizards. They're their next door neighbors who are uh, a lesbian couple. Mm-hmm. And they get to be happy and you know nobody is yeah, it's, it's, it's spoilers. Um Wizard ends up contracting AIDS and dying uh, Mm -hmm. at the end of the play. Um, But, like, the lesbian couple is, you know, happy and successful and, you know, supportive and good. And so, like, it's not that sort of... It doesn't entirely fall into that unfortunate sort of, like, gay is buried trope. But, again, this is also, you know, pretty early in sort of queer popular media and so that trope hadn't maybe quite been codified yet (laughs) well yeah and it's and it's also like i'm assuming that the the it was written by a queer person Um, yes and so often yeah i'm pretty sure often i'm I'm not often stories told by us aren't (laughs) don't follow that trope i feel like um yeah and if they do it's for good reason um yeah (laughs) and it's you know it's the show is about, like, I mean, I, I think ultimately the point is it's always worth it to love people, even though it's going to hurt. Yeah. Like, loving people will hurt, but you should love them anyway. And that's what it's about. And so, you know, Wizard gets to, you know, do a lot of things before he gets AIDS. But, you know, ultimately, yeah, like, they all come together as a family. Um, This weird, you know, mixed up family. Because, like... <laughs> Trina, um, uh, Marvin's ex-wife, ends up marrying his psychiatrist, <laughs> his therapist, and so, it's really cute. Um, and so, like, they're all like this big family, yeah. like Marvin and Wizard and Trina and and uh, Mendel, the psychiatrist, and Jason and the neighbors, uh, the, the lesbian neighbors, and like it's just you know. And so Wizard dies, but they all sort of still have each other, mm-hmm. and they you know they loved him and they love each other and. You know, it's it's not it's not rent. <laughs> <laughs> I liked what you said. I don't remember how you worded it, but it was like, uh, you know, taking a chance to love somebody or like learning to yeah, love it's, somebody. It's, it, yeah, it's it's worth you know, even though it's gonna it's going to hurt you. Ultimately, loving someone is going to cause you pain. It's still worth it. Well, and that's that's I think that ties perfectly into the discussion of like that is something you learn as an adolescent. That mm-hmm. is something, you know, in your, I would say the the normal time span of a teenage to early 20s, you learn that. You learn through first love. You learn through heartbreak. Yeah. Me, and, um, you know, maybe even beyond and, that, like, you know, you you start to lose people in your life, you know, grandparents, oh, oh, you know, whatever, yes, like people, yes, will, yes, 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 yes. people will die. And, you know, this is this is a, something that Jason goes through, the son character, like, you know, Wizard is, is kind of a father to him. Like, this is an important and dear friend in his life and he doesn't really know what to, he has this really sweet song because you know this he's the the final sort of act of the play takes place um when jason's about to turn 13 and he's going to have his bar mitzvah and he's not sure he even wants a bar mitzvah because it's causing all of this strife in his family and they're disagreeing about what needs to be done and he's like you know what i don't want one like i'm mad at my parents and i don't want to, to have a bar mitzvah if they want me to have one 
But he ends up, you know, deciding he wants to have it, and then Wizard gets sick, and he's like, well, can't we just mm-hmm. ha- wait until Wizard gets better? And they're like, oh, no. honey, I don't know that he's going to yeah. get better, so, like, you don't have to have the bar mitzvah, but if you are going to have it, like, we're going to, we need to just have it. And so he decides, yeah. oh, God, I, I cry. So I watched this on YouTube. I cried, mm-hmm. like, for the last, like, 15 minutes. I'm, like, crying, minutes. you're just describing He decides it. It so that intense. he wants to have his bar mitzvah in Wizard's hospital room. Uh. Uh. <laughs> it killed me. It killed me dead. I'm going to watch this as soon as we're yeah, done so recording. This sounds so it's good. It's so good. The music is great. Andrew Reynolds is just a delight. Everyone is. Everyone is. The, the main character, Marvin, is played by... Um, Oh god, I can't think of his name right now, but he he's he's a significant Broadway person and he's really really great. Um but it's just like he uh Jason has this song where he's talking to God and he's like, "Hi God, I know that I haven't really ever talked to you before, but like how about a deal? If you stop my friend from dying, I'll have my bar mitzvah." I'll I'll do that and it'll be oh. a miracle and and it'll be great. So like, can we just strike up this deal? And it's like, oh, yeah, it's really so. Yeah, yeah the it's on YouTube. I, I mean, they're all bootlegs. It was filmed for PBS. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the be- the better quality one uh, that I had been watching got taken down. So like the second half oh. of it, when I went back to watch the rest of it, I had to watch. It was a fine, but it's very quiet. A yeah. little hard to hear. But it's oh, it's so um, good. That makes me really, really want to watch. Not only that, but I, I mean, there's no way in hell I'll ever get to see it. But the um, the revival of uh, Angels in America that they're doing. Oh, I know. Yeah, Angels <sighs> in America is really good. I I was I was listening to uh, OPB and uh, um, they were talking to Nathan Lane about the role. Oh yeah. Ugh, and I. I a Nathan Lane is just a literal angel from heaven. <laughs> I know, I love that man <laughs> so much. Um, and he was just talking about the role, and I I just have to see him do that because per- I, I can't remember the the man he's playing, but he's basically playing the villain. Yeah. Um, not not really. I mean, it's way more complicated <laughs> than that. But um, I'm just like. I don't know how he'll do it, but I know he can. Yeah, he can do anything. Man can do anything. <laughs> yeah. So um. Sp- and then they they also talked a little bit about the birdcage. Oh, you know, I the love really the birdcage. Ah. Yeah. Uh, speaking though of gay musicals, um, <laughs> you know, in thinking about these sort of like different uh, coming of age stories, I was thinking about um, Hedvig and the Angry Inch. Oh, oh, why did, you are, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what an amazing one to bring up. Well, and I, I have complicated feelings on it. And of course, again, this is this is one that's sort of older in terms of sort of the contemporary conversation about queerness, um, especially the sort of original concept stage show that the movie was based mm-hmm. on. Um, so... Yeah, I have complicated feelings on it because, I mean, of course, it's it's important to frame it in it is one person's personal journey to finding themselves. But it's a, a really fucked up traumatic personal yeah, journey. <laughs> it's super traumatic. Well, and that's the really interesting because the story sort of begins with an maybe disingenuous or involuntary transition into transgenderhood. Because Hansel, the you know the character of Hedvig in the beginning, he didn't necessarily want to be a woman. Like he just he was a queer boy living in East Berlin, and this soldier said, "Hey, I want to marry you and take you to America, but they will not let us marry if you are a man. So you're going to have to get a sex change." And Hansel says, "Okay, I'll do that in order to marry you and go to America." And that's you know that sort of kicks off this really traumatic. Uh, sequence of events because this operation is not performed successfully and uh, Hedwig is left mutilated but like Hansel 
was fine being Hansel. He only took on the persona of Hedvig in order to... I would say cope. Yeah, or, I mean, not even cope. I mean, at first, he initially took on this persona of Hedvig just to escape. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, he ended up embracing her. But in the end, I think that... I mean, cause have you watched it at all recently? Not in, no, no. not at all recently. Yeah, no. because in it's the end, um, she, Hedvig, Hansel, I'm not even sure how to refer to this person at that point in the story because they take off the drag and they... Well, but, and, and it sort of become like a hyper version of themselves where it's like truer but like yeah they're or like more complete and more more okay uh-huh but like that sort of gender performance that Hedvig is is gone and so like maybe Hansel was always there inside and you know he was just playing the character of Hedvig in order to I mean like you said cope to to live to get by I don't know. That's a that that's such a complicated, and and it's so like that one character. Yeah, exactly. I say um, it's like I, I said. It's I so important yeah. that it, this is one person's journey, and it you know, and so I struggle because it's certainly not. You know, I wonder if it really is the story of a transgender person, like. I I I you know you know what I mean? Like, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. I think it's, um, I think even if somebody doesn't decide to stay with the sort of, I, I'm, I'm going to forget all of my word, my like correct words, <laughs> um, uh, doesn't decide to stay quote unquote passing or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, I, I think that ultimately, even if. I mean, I, I, I'm i just so bad <laughs> with explaining, especially, like, how I see it and also how I think other people uh, see it. But, um... Mm-hmm. I mean, certainly... I, I, big... If only we could have an interview. Yeah. <laughs> with, we, with, yeah. with Hansel. Yeah. Because it's it's so important to, to, like, ask or understand how somebody identifies. Because, uh-huh. like, you can... You, I, I, I stumbled recently on um, a couple of YouTube videos of trans people documenting their, um, the, the reversing their transitions. Yeah. Because they realized that they, it didn't feel exactly how they, they thought it was going to feel or um, they sort of felt themselves... Um, going into this world where they wanted to be themselves, but then other people put all, all this shit on them. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, um, then there are so many reasons why a person might right, exactly. change their mind about transition. I mean, I've I, you know I've had someone in my life who was very close to me who uh, transitioned, and then a few years later transitioned back. Um, I, I won't name any names but um but yeah i mean absolutely that's a thing to do um but you know just as far as the story of hedvig and the angry inch goes this is somebody who for completely impersonal reasons transitioned um and then in a very profound moment of self understanding untransitioned you know like hansel hedvig whoever they are took off the Hedwig costume and w- was bare. Like the the final shot of the film is this person walking naked down the street. You know, no wig, no dress. Like I think it could be seen as um, detransitioning, but I could I also could see it as like a continuation because um, not only trans people but everybody sort of you know we're always learning about ourselves and. And we change not only uh, our wardrobe, but also sort of our view of ourselves. Um, mm-hmm. And queer people have a little bit more broad view of what we could become. Yeah. 
Um, and so I think that you could see it as a detransitioning or a sort of sloughing off of this persona that you had to put on in order to survive, but it could also be like, I made it through, look how powerful I can be now without needing that. Sure, sure. And and I'm certainly not trying to imply that there's some sort of a regression that's happening. Um, (laughs) But maybe this sort of Hedvig was just a, you know, a character that that Hansel was playing. It it happens a lot. um, I don't know about a lot, but it happens uh, if if you think of like uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, multiple contestants from that show have come out either during the the show or after or since um, as as trans women because they sort of used the vehicle of drag and performance art of drag as a way to realize oh hey this is kind of my this is working this like is something i want forever Um, yeah and so it could be something like that or you know it's 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 yeah yeah well and like i almost wasn't gonna bring hedwig up because it's so complicated and weird and unclear as to exactly what like is going on <laughs> um but but I, I i i ultimately decided i did want to bring it into the conversation because you know we're maybe left with some question marks as to what um their identity is but ultimately it is clearly a journey of self-discovery yeah you know we go from hansel this you know little as a self-described uh, slip of a girly boy living in East Berlin, um, you know, through this just incredible journey of hardship and, and you know, coming out the other end self-actualized. Yeah. And I, and I think that, I mean, that's sort of the deferred adolescence happening there. Like, mm-hmm. If you, if you do see sort of the, the character of Hedwig as armor or um, protection or survival, it's sort of like, that's, you know, I, I'm imagining like a 14-year-old kid, like, no fucking clue how to do anything. I mean, I no, nobody knows what to do when they're in their teenage years. And it's yeah. like, sort of, and, 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 and I love the were deferred in this case for deferred adolescence because it's like it, it's both like putting it off but also a, a second like a, a, like having to go through it again yeah and because, i think that that's really the case with like falsettos is you know this yeah. man being like all right time to learn what this life is yeah <laughs> whereas, whereas um hedwig it's definitely like i didn't have i couldn't I, I I spent my formative years like ready to be something, and it and it couldn't it didn't it couldn't happen it couldn't happen it couldn't happen, and then it got put off and put off and put off and it's and it's like it, in Hedwig's case it's not like about finding yourself through relationships it's about finding yourself through yourself. Yeah, and that's I mean that's and I really want I wanted to rewatch it I went I tried to. But it's not streaming anywhere, and I'm not sure where my DVD is. <laughs> that is, and, and and that was a tough. That's a tough movie, not only to talk about because we're having such issues talking about it, but it's just a tough movie to watch. It's, it's yeah. I mean, it's it, amazing, it helps so much. But it's so hard. It, it helps so much that it does have some really rocking tunes. Uh, <laughs> oh, the they music, really. Oh my! The origin of love is like such an amazing song. Yeah, well, and I'm just thinking of, you know, like, Wig in a Box is, like, such yeah, a all great of, it, little yeah, it's, bop. Yeah. It's a, and, and I think even though we're having trouble discussing it and it's not an easy thing to discuss, um, the fact that we are discussing it, even if we stumble, is, is important. <laughs> um, yeah. Because we can always talk about if we're saying something wrong or uncomfortable, like, letting each other know letting our, you know, having our listeners let us know. Um, 
if we fuck up, let us know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're yeah we're doing our yeah, and mostly yeah, and I think it is important to remember that this is you know this is a conversation about this particular one character's very singular journey, and certainly this doesn't need to have any wider implications as far as you know various trans people's experiences uh you know everyone is going to have a different journey everyone's going to have a different experience and we're you know just yeah, questioning well, think, what this one character's journey it ultimately is well and I, and I think like it's impossible to talk about deferred adolescence without mentioning trans people because yeah. like that's that's like not only go that's literally second puberty like <laughs> if, yeah. if you choose to like if you're somebody if a trans, right yeah if you're a trans person who decides to take hormones like that's like, the exactly what puberty is <laughs> like yeah you're just having you're another puberty filled, yeah and it's like i can't imagine what that would feel like i mean i can i, I can you know i've seen many depictions in in art and uh yeah, I mean, I've had friends go through yeah. it and sort yeah. of seen what what it is that they're experiencing. Obviously, it's impossible for me to know consummately what what that was like for them, but at least I've you know been there to sort of see part of it. Yeah, and I've talked to one of, one of my um, uh, friends and coworkers about it um, when she started transitioning. It was like it was like a we just got along better because we were both so much more open about like she was like becoming herself and i was like so for it i was so happy Mm. um for her and we got to like have these wonderful long conversations and like that's what it's it's so nice when when somebody's curious and somebody's willing to talk about it yeah it's just really nice (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> on a um maybe a more upbeat note um i uh, i the other day decided to rewatch but i'm a cheerleader oh my god that is literally at the top of my list okay good <laughs> let's talk about what i'm a cheerleader because that's a, okay so it's maybe a bit naive but it you know it it came out in 1999 we didn't know what we know now about conversion therapy camps so, yeah. like, I, I'm giving it a pass for its rather um, toothless depiction of that kind of organization. Well, and it's also, like, the fact that that movie came out in 1999 is kind of amazing as well. <laughs> it is! It's crazy! It's so gay! <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, I mean, the people who are in, in it, like, the people who are involved, it's definitely some you know, out there characters uh, in the cast, because you've got Mink Stoll, of course, RuPaul. <laughs> um, wow, the guy who played the dad, it's uh, Harold from Hail of the Mod. I can't think, Bud something. But, like, there's, a, you know, this was this is a movie made by folks who are like, we want to make movies that are out there. We want to shake things up. You know, they... Well, and, it, and it, even though the, even though... It, in the film it's like a regular aged adolescence happening it's obviously made by people who have who are older <laughs> yeah well and you and know many, I, I wonder many of the actors are older too yeah i mean and you know she's uh the main character is 17 um yeah and i don't know i and mean the, that's and, the same age yeah. as the character in call me by your name so yeah mm-hmm. and and Oh, that's just, that like everybody needs to see that movie. It's just mm-hmm. hilarious. Yeah, it's really and, it, it's, and there's it's a lot really of great like, people. It's, it has amazing people in it, but it's it's like if you are just having such a day and you're just so done with straight people, you need to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's really sweet, and there are just some really funny little like um, nods, like how the um, the woman who runs the camp has a really gay son named rock and he's like really classically handsome and it's like clearly a nod to rock hudson which is fun oh yes completely Mm -hmm. uh 
<laughs> it's it's really cute and silly. And and you know, it makes some choices that I really appreciate because one, you've got the uh, main character Megan who is extremely femme. You know, she's she is, you know, long blonde hair and she's a che- I mean, she's a cheerleader and mm-hmm. she, but she she is a lesbian and you know, she doesn't change her gender presentation when she comes to terms with the fact that she's gay. She just, you know, she's still the same girl that she was, the same girly femmy, you know, hair barrette kind of girl. Um and then you've got uh this character in the camp, Jan, who uh is really butch. She's super duper butch. She's got her hair like buzzed with like a short mohawk and you know, she's she's just holds her body. She's really butch. And she has a moment in the movie where she's like, I just realized something and they're like, What is it, Jan? And she says, I'm not gay. I'm not a homosexual. And they're like, yes, you are, Jan. And she's like, no, I'm not. Everyone thinks that I'm gay because I'm not girly, but I, I like guys. Like I'm straight. I don't, I don't, I'm not attracted to women. I'm just butch. And like, she gets really upset and runs off. And I think that's important. You know, it, it, it at times seems to sort of fall into these comedic tropes with gender presentation and, uh, sexual orientation and you know that's obviously as we know at this point a complete fallacy mm-hmm. and this movie in 1999 acknowledges like sometimes lesbians are you know really femmy and sometimes uh really butch women are straight and it's you know it has nothing to do with uh, you know one has nothing to do with the other yeah and it it also points out like I feel like the straight world doesn't really have words for that. Like butch and femme are so queer coded that like, yeah. I feel like if, if you, cause, because in the straight world, you would say that's a, a masculine woman, which masculine is just like the most meaningless word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but just to briefly shout out the fantastic cast, Megan is played by, uh, Natasha Leon, who... Who plays on... queer again in... Uh, yes. <laughs> Orange is the New Black. Orange is the New Black. Also, um, she's got... in... She's the guidance counselor in um, uh, GBF. Oh, is she? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's she's, great. She's so wonderful. She's, like, hyper nice. It's amazing. <laughs> Aw. Uh, so, and then as Graham, the sort of love interest is Clea Duvall, who is just the best, like, 90s riot girl awesomeness. <laughs> uh, RuPaul, you got Kathy Moriarty playing uh, Mary Brown, the sort of villain of the story. Melanie Linsky is one of the girls in the camp. Uh, of course, Mink Stoll is... In it. Bud Court is his name, the 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 guy who plays... Megan's dad, and he's he's a cool guy. He's very counterculture. Um, Dante Bosco, also Dante known as Rufio, Rufio, Rufio. He's great. He's a great character. He's lovely. Also, he's dear. Um, uh, Prince Zuko. Oh yeah, right? Dante Isn't Bosco yeah. is Prince Zuko. <laughs> That's great. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, just just some really great folks in this movie. Uh, good cast, really funny, sweet sort of a film. Um, <laughs> and it's kind of it's kind of an interesting case, you know, as far as the the journey of the protagonist because she's so set on conforming to societal expectations that she doesn't even realize that she's gay and everyone around her has to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's just so uh, into the idea of, you know, doing what she's supposed to do that it doesn't even occur to her that she might be homosexual. And, it, you know, of course, it's silly reasons why her family... I mean, not some not so silly reasons. Like she's got pictures of like hot women up in her locker, and people are like, mm, "Honey, are you?" <laughs> but then also they're like, "She's a vegetarian," and that's funny. <laughs> they think she's a lesbian. Cause it's like, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian, <laughs> but 
Yeah, there's some maybe some truth to that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it's just really good and cute and nice and so gay. Like just a lot of lesbian makeouts in this movie. <laughs> just a lot of it, right? Yeah. You just minutes. <laughs> minutes. <laughs> um I have a another fun another fun example. Yeah. Uh Grace and Frankie on Netflix. Oh, you know, you're gonna shoot me. I've not watched it. It's okay. It's okay. It's 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 one of those ones where if you've it, honestly, like if you haven't seen it, you don't know how funny it's gonna be. Because you're like, oh it, I mean, obviously the cast is impeccable, but like yeah. you you don't know if it's gonna be humor from their day and age or if it's gonna be humor from yeah. our day, you know you know um but it's very well, and like, i haven't i haven't avoided it out of any kind of like yeah reluctance mm-hmm. it's just like i just haven't caught it yeah um but i mean the premise is that these two couples are broken up in the at the very beginning because the two husbands have been in a relationship with each other for 40 years <laughs> well, is that really a, I mean like I knew that that was yeah. I knew the basic premise of like their husbands are in love but I didn't realize that that's how long it was going on it's something like that <laughs> it might be 20 um, but like it's like half their relationship their lives yeah, yeah their exactly lives. Um, and so that is the complete epitome of deferred adulthood like they yeah. have to th- throughout the, the series they have to like refigure out like what are their boundaries as a couple? What are their boundaries as people? What are they comfortable with, uh, you know, in their relationship? What is their connection with their new relationship with their families? Like, yeah, how, how does how, this even work? Like, yeah, what are we, how how, what are we how doing? do they continue being <laughs> in the lives of their ex wives? Like, and 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 more yeah. so, and, and a lot, especially in the the third and fourth season, which I just actually binged because I've gotten back into it. Um, they have to deal more with like you know discovering what their interests is as are, are as people like one of them discovers he's a theater queen and he's obsessed and loves musical theater and is going to continue doing that one of them realizes <laughs> he he he's i mean he's always been like an activist but he's like discovering his new queer activist self um and it's Aww, it's really that's sweet. and they're also they like you know trying to figure out who they are in their seventies, as newly <laughs> out people, and it's yeah, it's hilarious and it's so sweet too. Yeah, I'm I'm reminded vaguely of Have you seen the Ewan McGregor movie Beginners? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's really so. It's, it's only sort of peripherally related. It's about this um, young man played by Ewan McGregor whose father, his elderly father. Um, is dying and he like i can't remember if if this happens concurrently but anyway his father like in old age comes out as gay and like wants to sort of like be a gay guy um Mm -hmm. and then he ends up you know falling ill and passing away and it and and it sort of inspires ewan mcgregor's character to like delve into his own life and what he you know what love is to him and he falls in love with the gorgeous and always wonderful melanie laurent my idol and role model in all things (laughs) (laughs) uh but yeah i i it's just sort of the this this idea of somebody you know in the last sort of phase of their life yeah trying to reconcile this new identity yeah yeah and I think that's perfectly um, uh, associated to what we're talking about. And then it makes me think of you and McGregor in another uh, example of deferred uh, adulthood. Uh, I love you, Philip Morris. Oh, that's a fun movie. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, and it's, I mean, again, it's it's that sort of story of a man who realizes or maybe has always known that he's gay and he's like, okay, I'm going to try it. Let's do it. And he does it full ham, like, all yeah. the way. <laughs> well, and, and that one's actually based on a true story, which is yeah. mm-hmm. crazy. Also, it has some of the best lines in any film ever. Oh, it's a, Honestly, like, my favorite part 
of the whole movie, and there's not even any dialogue. It's Ewan McGregor and he, um, as Philip Morris, and he's in their kitchen, and he's a diabetic, and so he's eating some chocolate. So, like, oh, and get he's his reading all sugar the little... And he's reading the little inside the dove foil wrapper. <laughs> and he's just, and he, like, like, he's just he, like, like clutching his it. heart. Yeah, and he reads it, and he, like, loves what's in that one, and he sets it down, and then he opens up another one, puts the chocolate in his mouth, reads it, and he doesn't like it, so he takes the chocolate out of his mouth and wraps it back up and sets it down. He's like, I don't want this one. And He's it's the so purest cute. human. The purest He's human. He's so cute. My, my, favorite part, my favorite part is when they're, um, <laughs> they're passing notes through the the other inmate and he's like he's like the janitor or whatever (laughs) and he's trying to uh i think i think it's uh ewan mcgregor trying to like ask him about where it was came from or what's happening to um to jim carrey's character um Mm -hmm. and the other guy (laughs) just really fast and really loudly yells you got a tracking number motherfucker (laughs) (laughs) That character is great. My word is my bond. <laughs> oh yeah, as he's being beat up. Oh my god, yeah. he's great. Ugh. He's great. That's, yeah, game movies and, and are good. They, I mean, yes, and and I mean that movie has some issues only in that Steve Russell, Jim Carrey's character, is a piece of shit. <laughs> he's a bad man. I mean, he's earnestly and deeply in love, but other than that, he's a bad man. Oh. And, and, but that movie will make anyone laugh it is hilarious it's hilarious and crazy because this real man really did those insane things oh i can't God. believe it like it's tr- <laughs> also yeah, it's- ewan mcgregor has never been more adorable in any role very probably very Basi- basically, probably basically to to sort of ascribe his character to anyone who hasn't seen it it's him from big fish but like blonder but and but gayer. like he's he's like a little gay boy. He's yeah, but he has so that same good. southern accent. <laughs> he's so sweet and fresh. He's the softest boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Yeah, he's really. I love you, <sighs> McGregor. He's so charming. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> no one is more. But of course, and and you know, I when we're talking about this subject, especially of like current popular TV shows, um, and you know older folks who are you know trying on their new identities you've got this sort of complicated um case of transparent oh my god why didn't i i i love that show home what like oh my gosh i feel so stupid for not even thinking of it (laughs) what a perfect example i mean obviously we know what's going on but like oh i just i'm Honestly, that show makes me so speechless. Um, yeah. <laughs> I hope it continues, and I hope they fire his ass. Um, yeah. And I hope I, I I don't know who they're gonna pick, but they have to pick somebody, a trans woman. Yeah, it's a it's a tough uh, it's a tough situation. I have to deal with. Uh, seriously, I have so many strong feelings about that show. It's so beautiful, and it's so. I mean, it it really does fit this this subject so well, and I I don't even know where to begin talking about it because I wish I had written a, like a whole article about it. Because yeah, well, like we're already at an anything? hour. So like... Yeah, do you, do you no, have anything I mean... to say? Like, because I know you really just have to you just have to see the show, and you have to sort of mm-hmm. like it. It says it all, honestly, about the subject. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, and I, again, especially now that we're at an hour, like maybe um, if we do want to talk about it, it's kind of got to be its own thing. It really does. I mean, it, there's so much there, not only in the content of the show, but in the real world consequences of it, you know? Yeah, <sighs> maybe after this whole situation gets resolved, I, yeah. we can, if they, if they, we can if do they a retrospective on it. Firm up what's going to happen. I would love to talk about it because uh, have you seen all the seasons of it? No, I watched some of the first season, oh. but I kind of dropped off. It it gets incredibly good. Like they hire way more trans characters, well, trans actor actresses and uh, actors. Um, it delves so deeply into like queer family and queer history. Oh my goodness! Mm. <laughs> well, that's but cool. It, I, it will be difficult to continue watching it. Um, yeah. I mean, or to, to watch it 
w- knowing what sort of was going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, well, just quickly to I... anybody who doesn't know, Jeffrey Tambor, the 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 actor who plays the main trans character, um, was harassing one of the trans actresses, if not more than one. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, especially. I mean, not especially. It's unfortunate well, because well, that was I a mean, person well, and that happened to them. But well, like, it, yeah. I really liked him, you know. Well, and 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 his performance is incredible, um, and they take with the whole show they've taken so much care and and honestly he was very upfront about like how much research and discussions he was having but obviously you know he it, it got icky yeah yeah i i just yeah it's really it's just another one to add to the pile of disappointments you know <laughs> it is um and t- to anybody who you know is interested in all about that show i would highly recommend like doing your very best if you can to get through it um obviously if you're trans and like that show is i mean it's made me feel so many emotions and i've talked to my my friend about it and she you know loves it too but it's like not only the subject matter but also yeah again that's real it's it's yeah that's a it's, it's important a for a lot of reasons yeah yeah, yeah. <sighs> well is there anything else before we wrap up we want to um pay some lip service to anything else that needs mentioning or brief discussion um i i wrote down another example but it's sad so <laughs> <laughs> what is it i just i wrote down brokeback mountain i mean yeah that's never yeah. been one of my favorite movies, but it's ob- like this the clear obvious one to go to, especially in, in this. I mean, this and it was topic. it was important, you know. It important it did, and, it, and honestly, did an well important done. thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, it it it's aged a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was the movie for for the when it came out. Like it was. Well, I mean, it it's the movie then. to get straight people to care, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it uh, it is that. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there was anything else that uh, I had considered bringing up, but the uh, I mean, the first thing that came to mind for me when uh, when you pitched the topic was, but I'm a cheerleader. Yeah, that's yeah. just fun. Uh, yeah. It's the first one I wrote down. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and actually, um, Falsettos was just when I happened to come across, like, after you had already yeah. <laughs> pitched. I was like, this oh, yeah. is perfect. I, oh, my God. I, I wasn't I wasn't watching Grace and Frankie thinking about it. Like, I was just watching Grace and Frankie. And I was like, oh, it fits perfectly. Mm-hmm. And then as far as, like, what I'm going to talk about in my in my book and, and for that um, sort of uh, lecture. Yeah. It's not going to really be a lecture, more of just a conversation. But... Um, you know, a lot of queer people don't have, you know, a significant other until they're, you know, in college or even later than that. Um, they don't have a, you know, a sort of first love heartbreak sort of situation till later, too. I mean, obviously, there are examples of of those happening at a young age for queer people, but I feel like it's more common to be a late bloomer, a late, 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 late bloomer, <laughs> <laughs> and that and that's sort of yeah. what a lot of the um, poems in my book are. Not necessarily about, but like it's an examination of masculinity and manhood, um, and that's something that happens when you are dealing with adolescence. Like you have to examine your place within that system. Yeah. Or without it. I mean, and I I gotta say, like, just, you know, I don't want to talk at length on it, but, like, it's so interesting to me to hear about that experience that other people have, because that was so not my struggle, and I, I'm so lucky for that, mm-hmm. um, because, like, you know, growing up, I, you know, I, I'm not the kind of person who really, like, develops a lot of crushes anyway and so i was just you know and and on top of that like i'm bisexual so it's like 
liking boys was not an issue for me. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was fine. Liking boys was fine. Um, but like, you know, I in high school realized that I had developed feelings for a close female friend of mine, and we, you know, long story short, we began having a relationship, and you know, we were quiet about it, um, mostly because she was uh, not comfortable being fully out at the time. Um, but like, I, you know, when I told my mom, like, it was not a real thing, like, I knew that it was fine to be queer, and it wasn't something I was, like, afraid of at any point. Um, I did struggle with certain other people in my life, but I never felt like I was in the wrong. You know, I was lucky enough to have a wonderful mother who raised me to believe that whoever I am is who I'm supposed to be. Um, And so, you know, I knew it's like, oh, this isn't, you know this isn't my fault. This is their problem. Uh, and it's, uh, it was, it was sucky, but I, I knew that it was them and not me. And, uh, and you know, I mean, like I've been in a total of two relationships, my relationship in high school. And then now with Will <laughs> and we've been <laughs> together for eight years. So like, I, you know, my queer experience is really maybe, um, unusual. <laughs> I don't well, know. I, don't I, I, I feel I don't like it, it is. The, like media's telling me, like, oh, the gay experience <laughs> is this whole other thing than what I have, and it's like, yeah, I mean, but like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like an outlier, you know, <laughs> and maybe I'm not, but the narrative is is telling me that I am. I don't. I mean, it, it's the. I think you have more of the. You know, I would say probably the more average narrative, not like you know that meaning of average but like but typical <laughs> t- typical yeah it, it, i feel like that's happening more and more as people are beginning you know becoming more accepting and all that like and and also like i feel like there's also at least hopefully less pressure on queer people to have that sort of first relationship and it'd be like you know the biggest deal because it, it is yeah. a big, like it's it's that's one of the hard parts of it is like you're so ready or you, or you want to be ready, and everybody else is going through that at that age, that, you know, if, if you're not, it feels really bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but then, I mean, but bisexual people have so much other stuff they have to deal with, you know? <laughs> like the fact that we exist, really. Yeah, I mean, my... my... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a fiction, I'm real. One of my Hello? friends. One of my friends was texting me, I think it was either last night or today, and he was like, I'm writing a poem about it. I'm like, yeah, please do. Please do write yeah, a poem like, about it. <laughs> like I'm a I'm a cisgendered woman who's been in a relationship with a cisgendered man for eight years, but I'm still queer, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, sometimes it feels like I'm not allowed to be, you know? And, like, that sucks. And I know that there's a lot of people out there saying, like, no, bisexual people are real and they're still queer. And even if you're in a relationship with a, you know, cisgendered person of the other gender, like, you're still queer you're still bisexual and it's like yeah but sometimes it doesn't feel like it Uh. well i just don't the people that are so like you know oh it's just you know not admitting to yourself that you're fully gay you're whatever the bullshit is it's like yeah i'm like or you know you just tried to be gay for a while and stopped or something why is it their business like i mean maybe if your heart was broken by somebody who's bisexual but like that isn't because they were bisexual. <laughs> yeah, it's just because <laughs> that I'm... wasn't meant to be. <laughs> like, that was not a good relationship, and it was to end. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But you know, just bisexual yeah. struggles and all that. That's yeah. <laughs> just those doubts that you have. But that would be but, another yeah, good like... podcast title. <laughs> <laughs> bisexual struggles <laughs> yeah i mean obviously i can't obviously i can't be the co-host of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yes i so I, I don't need to talk about that anymore that's that's a whole other yeah we i think we need we need a break <laughs> I, yeah we need to be done this is over we're done here I, I am i am definitely like ready to just ball from everything we talked about <laughs> Oh boy, then maybe don't watch falsettos yet. Well, I mean, like the whole thing we've talked about, it's also like coming up in therapy too recently, like, Uh you know, sort of, yeah. So I'll I'll write a poem. I'll write like 
another book about it and that'll be we'll talk about it again then (laughs) (laughs) okay that's a good plan although the next upcoming book is going to be way more fun and way more queer so look forward to that oh gosh it's just getting better and better it's like (laughs) upsettingly queer (laughs) (laughs) is there such a thing I don't know. I, well, not to me, but to, to to a broad audience, it is upsettingly queer. <laughs> or at least maybe excessively. <laughs> Excess- excessively. What's even? I want. I want something even more than that, though. Like a smorgasbord. Egregiously. Egregiously. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because that also has like a. I want it. I want the like negative connotation. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's not a problem, but like uh, egregiously is perfect. Yes. Agree just <laughs> Well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Whew. Okay. Uh, so, did you want to do that goofy I kind of wanted to, thing? but, like, I don't know if I have it in me today. <laughs> okay. Well, unfortunately, it's going up on Monday, so um, maybe we just skip it this time. Okay. <sighs> uh, yeah, I mean, or we can do it if you're if you've got it if you want to do it or but if it's not gonna work if it's not gonna be fun then we won't do it and that's fine. I mean I'm just to do I, it every time I, I've just been listening to um, one of my favorite podcasts um, throwing shade and they do it so well I don't want to like copy mm. them <laughs> and they're like actual <laughs> comedians so it sucks that I'm like mm-hmm. trying to do their thing anyway I, I I'll give them a little shout out and like one of they they basically have made characters to do their ad reads from. Oh, okay, that's cute. And so there's this one character who's named Mondo, and he owns a condo, and that that's <laughs> literally his only personality trait. <laughs> so anytime they're talking about, like, a home delivery, like, anything, because everything's home delivery these days, he's just like, yes. home, I mean condo. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. So uh, shout out to them, and, like, that's what I want to do, but it's it, they're really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> well we can aspire okay well then i guess we can wrap up okay let's get that script up <laughs> yep. spoiler we use a script <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right i guess i'm okay that does it for today's episode thanks for listening please subscribe to us on youtube if you absolutely love us and like the video if you only like us You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and Anchor.fm. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Check us out on Twitter at LitMeritPod for updates and news. You can also find us on our personal tweeters. We do have Uh, those. I I am at KingWithNoName. And I am at ThatJackanApes. And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no no guilty guilty pleasures. pleasures.